Right, what's good fam we back with another video shout out to a subscriber we're going to be to react to how do mixed race people identify so i'm gonna check this out see how it is you know might learn a little bit you know so we're going to jump straight to this make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet um make sure you smash the like button as well man all right let's get it Oh. My experience of mixed race people, when one person is what in this culture, when one person is white, very often um, the person who's mixed race tends to come to maybe I don't decide end up they end up identifying more often than not with the more the group the part of them that is more minoritized, not majoritized. So I don't think those are words, Sam. Uh, so, <laughs> Brett, so, so yeah. Brett would end up identifying, even if Brett looked more white, they, right. what I see again and again is that people will still tend to identify with the part of them that is that is not white. That So are you asking if I'm that's... I'm asking you, what do you make, can you talk about well, how that is? You know, how is it that not only does Barack Obama tend to identify as black right. Right, when he's half white, but the fact that we all see him as black... But he identifies that way. How is it that he comes to identify that way? And most people tend to do that. So um, that's a that's a really salient, like persisting, ongoing question for folks who study this. Um, and and so I, I think there's kind of two answers. I think the first one is. We're basically seeing kind of the way race is organized in the United States. So in the United States, early history, um, there were, you know, Europeans are arriving. They're bringing indentured servants. Some of them are European. Um, but there were some Africans, too, who were initially indentured servants. And there were intermingling happening. And babies were arriving and the powers that be were very very concerned about how those children's identities might unsettle a kind of an emerging power structure around being european so what began was basically a norm around identifying half white children with that minority parent to build that minority population but also to protect whiteness that's essentially kind of the historical kind of background of that but what it evolved to 400, 500 years later, let's see, 1600, about 500 years later, is a persisting way that race impacts day to day experiences. And so, if you're perceived as something, if you're perceived as non white, and there's something about the way race is organized that we can see non whiteness very clearly, we can see whiteness, very, like basically, if there's any part of you that unsettles or is somewhere something different than white you're already put in the person's sort of vision as a non-white person, that that's going to impact how you're treated. And those treatment, that day-to-day -day experience is what builds identity. So who I think I am has a lot to do with how people treat me, how they, how I feel like they see me. And essentially when we talk about why racially mixed folks, particularly uh, folks who have partial white and partial black ancestry tend to identify as African-American, it's generally a reflection of that of that exposure and that treatment. And it's not just about whites interacting with you and treating you with bias. It's also about people of African-American descent saying, hey, you're one of us. And there's this notion, I don't know if anyone's heard of the one drop rule. Is that still a thing? No, really? It's not a thing. Okay, well, it used to be a thing. Um, but basically, that's, it was a cultural norm that said the black population is made up of anyone who has any African ancestry at all. And I mean, one thirty-second, like one great-grandparent is African-American, everybody else is white, that person is black. That's essentially how law defined race. And after law stopped caring about race in a very explicit way, those cultural conventions became norms. So ultimately it's about how that identity is a is a reflection of the way you're treated on the day-to-day -day. 
So that's one answer. I think the other answer has to do with what the what feels more right to the person. So I'll give you an example. I was on a, a flying here to uh, to State College, and I was um, in you know in my seat. And this woman walked by. She's an African American woman with really short hair. And I just I told her, your hair is beautiful. And she was saying, thank you. And we had this really great exchange about hair. And I never feel more black than when I talk about hair. So I'm like, I got my hair did. Hair, I know my hair takes so long. How about your hair? Well, I did this. And so it's like this wonderful experience of talking about hair. And that is a part of identity too. And it's about, ident it's about finding those moments of validation and rolling with it. So I identify as a mixed race person, but I, I also very strongly identify as a black person in part because of those types of experiences. So it's, it's some of it's push, but a lot of it's, well, it's about being embraced, but it's also about kind of how I feel like I'm viewed by other people. Yo, very cool. Okay. Brooke, on the left, my left. Can you pass him the mic? Uh, how about you? How, first of all, what's your, what's your name, background? I'm Trey. My dad's black and my mom's white. So how, how do you identify? Black, mostly. Uh -huh. When do you identify as white? Never. Yeah? Wait, your mom's white? Yeah. How's your mom think feel about that? Um, I feel like my dad always told me, like, never be under the illusion of inclusion. Like, you're never going to be fully accepted into the white community. So as a half black, half white, I'll never fully be accepted as a white person. So I would never identify as one. Well. Uh-huh. And when you, can I, can, Jennifer, I'm going to ask one more question and okay. then you take over. When you're with your mom and your mom's family, do you, like, how about in those moments when you're just with your mom? Well, when I'm just with my family, I'm pretty comfortable. I know they all accept me as their grandson, son, brother, sister. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. So can I ask a follow-up? So um, do you think your mom would like you to identify as white? Or have you talked about it? No, we've never really talked about it, but I don't think she would want me to. Like, I don't know. Okay, and I ask because I've had this conversation with my dad, and he just accepted just a foundation, like there is no way that you could ever be accepted. Like the illusion of inclusion is that's a wonderful way to think about that. And so I sort of looked at him like, you're white, and I'm your kid, and I don't identify it in the same category as you. I'm trying to imagine, like, if that just seems like it would bother me as a parent that my kid is not identifying the same way. And when I talked to him about it, he basically shared with me that he knew that there, the world was a, can be a very racist place and that that's where that I need for identifying came from. So I think that a part of, you know, kind of going back to your first question about like what's unique about being a mixed race person, I think one of the things that emerges is a degree of race consciousness amongst families who have mixed race children and a exceeding level of race consciousness among whites who are in multiracial families. Mm -hmm. So folks who have mixed race backgrounds where one parent is white generally have a far greater sense of race and how it operates than most other white people. And folks who have parents who were or families where one person is black and someone isn't have a generally have a sense of what black means in society and that's not something you find in every family where those folks aren't present so you know i really appreciate you sharing that i think certainly i can't imagine families who sit around saying you know well you're white well i know and let's talk about race all day because it's thanksgiving like nobody does that but it becomes a component of how these conversations that we have can and can't do the work that we want them to do. So I sometimes, want, you know, I had to seek that conversation out with my dad, but he wasn't just going to have it with me. I had to ask him. And I asked him after I was 
graduated from college, had your class, had the arsenal, I was ready to go. It's like Sam said, blah, blah, blah. So like, who is this man? So how about your... I want to find him. So your seven, it's your youngest one who's really light-skinned. Yes. So it's kind of a conversation you'll have with him in a way, right? Like, yeah. Does he see you as his mother? Yeah. <laughs> oh, mom, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so how, how, you know, it's really interesting, right? How these go back and forth. It is, I think, what's interesting and... So, of course, he sees me as his mother. Yeah. I mean, it's um, <laughs> I could share so many stories, but you're recording this. Yeah. So, yes, he does. Um, and my oldest son does, too. But I think what's interesting, and you might think about this as people who were formerly very young people, you know, race is hard to talk about. Race is really hard to talk about when you're a young person because everything's very concrete. And, you know, for my older son, he had a lot of questions. And we had an ongoing conversation. He's like, okay, well, you say you're black, but you look like this, and so-and-so is this, and what is going on? And I think I'm this. I'm like, well, you're kind of that, but you're historically. Let's talk about segregation since you're five. You know, I'm a sociologist. This is what we do. But we had that conversation. I felt more comfortable because I saw him as someone who was physically marked as like, you know, you're going to grow up in a world where people are going to see you this way. My youngest son has a sense of difference, but has not been presented with race in as explicit of a way. And so it's harder to sort of begin that conversation unless I want to sit down and say, okay, slavery, what do you think? Yep. He's like, yep. bad, right? Yes, bad. And then we move on. So with, so with your youngest son, it's just his light skin just adds another dimension to the, to the conversation, which is cool, right? I mean, it's, gonna, it's just going to add that. I would say one last thing, though, is, and I think I'm probably more sensitive to this, and I, I really appreciate the story that you shared. We're very, um, you know, when we introduce them to, to people or when we're around, we're very keen on which families we feel comfortable with our kids socializing. And in part, what we're looking for is, do we feel comfortable that these families are going to be accepting, etc., of whatever difference that we feel is happening in our household. So I don't know how he will grow up, but I think it's, we've done a lot of work to craft environments where he, we think he and his brother can feel comfortable. I'm going to keep it a book. This is a lot of shit that they have to go through. Um... Just to feel accepted, but that's how that's the world. That's the world. But like I always say at the end of every video, these videos be you to the fullest extent. Um, you have people that love you, you have people that hate you. As long as you're comfortable in your own skin, you straight. That's all that matters, man. But uh, it actually, this this was pretty cool. This was pretty dope to actually get their point of view of what they have to go through. So, and plus it got more deep in into the intellect of it. So it, this this wasn't bad. This wasn't bad at all. It's like when I listen to Omar Johnson, a lot of the stuff that he talk about, I agree with. Some I don't. Um, and sometimes he be going, he be going kind of, is <laughs> I'm trying to find the words. They say he be like on one subject, then bam, he on another subject, then he come back to this subject. And I'm like, okay, sir, just take your time and just explain all the way through. But other than that, man, that well, that's a whole different person. He knows his race. He's fully black. I'm fully black. Uh, both my parents are black. So, uh, yeah, man, this is a lot. But, yeah, like I said, just be comfortable in your own skin. Uh, if people don't accept you for who you are, then don't be around them. It's just that simple. All right, man. But y'all already know, man. Make sure y'all like the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel and make sure that y'all comment down below what y'all thought about the video, man. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Peace, love, blessings, man. See y'all in the next video.